Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here and today we are talking Gotham Knights. Six things you need to know about this game. The game looks hella cool. From the stuff they've shown so far, obviously some of the earlier trailers were a little bit mixed, but some of the more recent gameplay stuff they've shown, seeing the game in action with some of the combos, some of the abilities, some of the different characters, honestly things are looking really cool. And if you like things like the old Arkham games, I think there's definitely going to be something to sort of vibe with. So with that being said, today I want to highlight six things you need to know about this game. So if you guys do enjoy this, a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below. Below. Let me know if you guys are looking forward to this and if you are which of the four playable characters are you gonna shotgun? Now with that being said, let's begin with point number one, Batman is dead. Yeah, sorry, spoilers, but it's kind of said already. Basically, Batman got clapped and it's up to you and the squad to protect Gotham. In this game, you'll be playing as one of the four protégés between Batgirl, Nightwing, Robin or Red Hood. Red Hood definitely looks hella cool, that's my personal opinion. Each of them, of course, have their own unique movesets and traversal styles. Robin can teleport around using the Justice League satellite. Red Hood can, I mean, do some weird soul jumping thing. That bit doesn't necessarily make too much sense, but he does still look cool in combat. Essentially, they all have their own cool, unique ways of traversing through the city, as well as dispatching the enemies that you will fight. Moving on from there to point number two, it's an RPG. While of course the game does have the feel of an Arkham game, to an extent there are additional systems layered on top. We've seen leveling and progression systems, allowing you to unlock new moves and abilities as you progress throughout the game. Enemies also have levels attached to them too, so it's fair to assume that you're probably going to want to sort of be somewhat similar levels when you go to fight those enemies, or of course they're going to present a much greater challenge. Some things will also be leveled for specific encounters, which does sound pretty cool. We also heard the developers talk about different damage types, things like thermal, cryo, stun, poison, etc, which of course will factor into your weapon choices. Characters can also be built in different ways, so while you do of course have the uh, pre-made styles of the four characters, there are still ways to build them differently. The dev team gave an example of say a red hood who can be built to be a grappler or a ranged demon. Number three, the game has a day and night cycle. The game is broken up into day and night. During the day, you'll hit the belfry and piece together crimes and clues from the night before to try and find the root of that plot. You then go out at night and act on those clues and crimes that you piece together to further those plots and find out more information. It sounds very organic and definitely makes it feel much more like you are both having to sort of be the one to stop these crimes, not just on brawn, but also on brains as well. There's sort of a Batman detective level stuff that uh, is true to the comics. It also means you discover a lot of the missions in an order that is unique to you, rather than necessarily having a critical path with all the villains that you'll encounter along the way. Moving on from there to point number four, Villain Knights. These are described as the sort of culmination of progressing through some of the side missions where you discover more about the crimes that are being committed and the plot it leads to where it culminates into these sort of grandiose encounters with some more iconic villains in Batman's rogues gallery. It sounds fun and kind of sort of builds up to these events and we've potentially seen two of these already with the Harley Quinn gameplay and also the very early Mr. Freeze gameplay we saw as well. And the whole reason behind breaking up these sort of potentially side mission style encounters is to sort of give this impression that there are widespread threats throughout Gotham. Feels very sort of comic book and definitely can't wait to see how it plays out in game. Moving on from there to point number five, it is co-op. But despite the fact that there are four characters to choose from, it's only two players, which is kind of sad. It would really be nice to go around with four players, but alas, two player co-op is what we're working with. Honestly, it does seem like the developers might have reined it in to ensure the experience is as fun as possible. Here's hoping they do, of course, deliver on that front. But what's cool is that in co-op, you can play with your friends in the same world and do entirely different things. You're not tethered to each other. So if you want to start a mission without your friend, you can, and they can join you later. It also means that if you complete a mission in your friend's world, when you get to that point in your version of Gotham, it'll ask you if you want to skip it because you've already completed that story story already. And then finally, the last one, there are awesome suits. The suits are supposed to influence playstyles, but also have a theme that spreads across the armors. We get a look at quite a few different ones so far, and honestly, some of the art looks absolutely incredible. One of the ones of Red Hood wearing sort of a almost samurai-esque attire looks so incredibly awesome that mask as well is fantastic but honestly having the broad range of suits to choose from is one of the great things about these games it kind of gives you more things to pursue and of course when there's playstyle stuff linked to those as well it's definitely going to be worth unlocking all of them these have all been designed by a different artist and have customizable parts which fit within the same theme and they can also be transmogged onto other gear so if you really do like the look of one of them like the red hood one i spoke about then you can keep it for the rest of your playthrough but for the time being, that is pretty much it. Those are a few things you need to know about Gotham Knights. Honestly, the game is shaping up to be pretty interesting and I definitely do have it on my radar. 
If you guys do any more questions, by all means let me know in the comments down below. If you've missed some of our recent videos, you can check out one of these ones and keep it locked for plenty more.